Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Lazy Cat Reactions. As you can tell, this is episode three of season two of Chucky. Hail Mary. Jake proposes the unthinkable, brainwash the captured Chucky and turn him into an ally. As we saw in the last episode, they were being kind of stalked by a Chucky doll. <clears throat> he was taking pictures and everything, but he wasn't trying any way to kill them. And they figured out that he was a scout. He was a scout and they were, and he was basically kind of reporting back to someone. And as we know, <coughs> there were 72 Chuckies and some of them probably perished when the vehicle crashed and some probably didn't. So, I have a feeling we're going to see a few more. And so, yeah, so it sounds like they're going to try to turn him into an ally. Because my guess is if they can, which I don't think it's going to work, but if they can, <clears throat> then maybe they feel that, you know, he can go up against some of the other Chuckies that will come by. I don't know. We'll see. But I really, really do not trust that priest. I think he has sinister intentions because this was the school that Charles Lee Ray was at. Was he there is my question. Are we going to find out that like he was there, maybe a classmate, maybe not, maybe it was too long ago. Who knows? But I don't trust him. I mean the way he left Jake alone in that room with the Chucky Scout and kind of his behavior. I'm like, he knows something. So, yeah, I definitely do not trust him. Let's get started. Yeah, and what is it about Nadine? Why do you care about the doll? And what is that? What sins? What has he done? That's not ominous. Wasn't your fault. Jake. to see from that far. I wouldn't Yeah. He's just doing that to wind Devin up. Right now. Like, why is oh, he doing that? Why is he blowing her off? I'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we should kill him while we have the chance. Before anyone... There you go. But you reprogram him. Like, brainwash him. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't being serious. Huh? You can't reprogram your his brain. <laughs> it's like, oh shit. <laughs> I was funny, he's a brainwasher. He was like, hmm? <laughs> like, uh oh. <laughs> Man, it took you guys long enough. That's why she was in the church. That's why she was in the church to get stuff out of there. Okay. How is this going to reprogram? Me? What is the point of this? How is this going to break him? I don't get it. So he sees this so much that it causes him to not want to do it anymore? I don't think that's gonna work. Not with the serial killer. That's working. Yeah. 
Ugh, it's gross. Yeah, very gross. gross. The thought of violence is actually making them sick now. <laughs> no. Oh, no, no. That's how they should have tortured him to begin with, with all the happy stuff. But I like how Lexi and Nadine are sleeping by each other. I don't know that I'd take those out yet. I don't think he's completely reformed. Wanna play? Wanna play? He's faking it. He's not reformed. He's faking this whole thing. I don't think it's gonna work. I do like that Nadine is involved. I did feel kind of bad for her in the last episode when Lexi said to her that they're not going to be friends, even though it seems like they kind of are. So I'm hoping that she'll kind of say something to her later about, yeah, we are friends. Cause it seemed like Nadine was hurt by that. And yeah, it's like, I get it. And it could have been that maybe she felt like she didn't want to be Nadine's friend because, you know, Nadine is, to her, kind of weird. But also because she felt like she wasn't going to be there very long. You know, she figured that she and Devin and Jake would be getting out of there fairly fast <coughs> and didn't really want to establish relationships, you know. But now... Even if they do get out fairly fast, she and Nadine have kind of bonded a bit. And, you know, I was thinking about that, like, the whole thing with their phones. And it's like, I get that they took their phones because, you know, they're supposed to, in a way, it's sort of a punishment. But, <coughs> so sorry about this. Um, but I kind of feel like that's a little extreme like why don't they make sure that they don't have their phones in class you know like when they go to do class and stuff like that they can turn their phones in give them back to them at lunch turn them in but let them have them in the evening you know like they were saying that they couldn't have like ipads or whatnot but they have nice rooms and it looks like you know they can do some reading and stuff like that and i'm like why don't you guys though allow them to have a few I mean, to constantly be punishing, and I know they would say it's not a punishment, but really it is, but to con constantly be punishing them is not going to work. It's nice for them to have breaks. So, I don't know. I mean, I have no idea about that, but it just seems to me like it's a little too extreme that... Even if it was a thing where they held onto their phones until the end of the day and then when classes were done for the evening or they were retiring to their rooms for the night, then they're giving their phones back. You know, and then and they could also of course restrict the content that they view. You know, they could put on some parental controls or something. So that they can't view things like YouTube or whatnot. Maybe they can just watch certain things, you know, watch certain movies and whatnot. I don't think, personally, I don't think that that would be wrong. <coughs> Please cut this. Um, I think that it would be a way of being like, you know, here's some relief from your day. But, what do I know? Hi, who are you guys? <laughs> Yeah, we know. He's faking it. Anybody answer our questions? Sure. Why aren't you bringing in this thing that's just an act? Uh-huh. Devin's right. <laughs> I'm with Devin. Devin, wait, come on. I'm you with Devin. Home. I have to talk to him. Can you watch Chucky for me? Okay. No need to worry about me. I took four years of crab and uh -huh. Plus, cool. I got this stitching knife. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll be right back. I'm gonna get Chucky something to eat. 
Now what's he gonna do with that info? I was gonna say, if they had just hugged, then I would have been like, no big deal. People hug. Yeah, of course it's locked. Of course it can get. I'd be like, try. No, Trevor, I don't know where you can get condoms. <laughs> I start to wonder why all of a sudden the same package is getting <laughs> delivered to this incarnate lord place. You know, the preacher, or the, the priest, saw Devin and Jake. Although I was thinking, you know, you're in kind of a public place right there on that stairwell where anyone could see you. Granted, they were the only ones there, but I was kind of like, yeah, that might not necessarily be the smart thing to do. I was happy though to see Jake do that because it felt to me like in the first episode that he was kind of pulling away from Devin. You know, like when they first went there and, you know, Devin had reached out and took his hand and he didn't seem very receptive. And I even said, you know, don't pull away. So it's good to see him doing that. You know, because it's like, well, maybe he's not, maybe he just didn't really respond then because he was up in his own head or something, you know. So it's nice that he's doing that. Why do I get the feeling he's going to separate them? You know, it's like they were having their own bedroom together. And I'm like, why do I get the feeling he's going to separate them? I'm going to maybe try to brainwash or something because, you know, he saw. And I'm like... Leave them be. There's nothing wrong with it. Leave them be. And I have a feeling that Trevor is going to die. I don't think he's going to be, I don't think he's going to make it to the end of the season. But he might, he might be one of the last ones who dies. But, you know, he's doing all this like threatening and stuff. And I would have been like, you know what? You may want to watch yourself too. Don't try threatening me unless you intend to follow through, because I can be just as dangerous. So, yeah, I, I don't think he's going to be long for the world. I do hope Nadine survives, because she's, she's kind of cute. I like how, you know, she talked about babysitting, and then she pulls out the knife. Lexi's like, who are you? And she's like, hmm. But she didn't really answer her, so that was interesting. Mr. Evans. I don't know. Thought you were sick. Should be out of bed if that's the case. Mind your own business. Uh, yeah, it's just something I ate. It's Yeah, maybe. The right thing. I would have been like, no, thank you. That <laughs> was kind of cute. <laughs> Lexi's What's starting that? to fall. You don't know? Okay, so that Chucky does kill. Since he killed that one, he's not a scout. Where the hell was Chucky hiding? Because that would have been a pretty small spot, and you would think O'Malley would have seen him. Granted, it's dark in there, but you'd think O'Malley would have seen him. And one thing I can tell that, obviously, the people who write this are not Catholic, because... Catholics say Holy Spirit, they don't say Holy Ghost. I think other branches of Christianity say Holy Ghost, but Catholics say Holy Spirit. So as soon as she said Holy Ghost, I would... Of course, she may not be Catholic. Just because she's at a Catholic school doesn't mean that she is Catholic. But, still with it being a Holy... With it being a Catholic school and they're trying to brainwash them with Catholicism, you would think she would have said Holy Spirit. So, I grew up Catholic. That's how I know. You see my reactions to Midnight Mass because they go on about that and I'm like, yeah, I know all of, I know all of this. Um, so, it looks like the priest, what did they say his name was? Bryce? Father Bryce? Uh, it looks like he's going to try to find a way maybe to, like, punish Jake and Devin since he saw them kissing. And it's like, dude, 
by doing that, aren't you sinning? Because firstly, you're sticking your nose in where it doesn't belong. And you're punishing these people for doing absolutely nothing wrong. So, aren't you sinning? Doesn't that make you a sinner? And I don't know what to make of Nadine, you know? Like, I like her, and I hope she survives, but there's obviously more to her. Because, you know, like, we found out she's a klepto, but she's been kind of mum about some things with her wife. Anyways, let's keep going. So that was my question when she was taking her drugs, is I was thinking, what happens when you run out of them? How are you going to Honey, that's not going to do shit, so stop praying. I think I would have stuck around. I would have been like, fuck you, I'm out of here. Jake would turn the doll. Oh! You see? Oh, I never skip our day. Well, the drugs were still planted, so they're still going to think that Lexi has, and which she does. But I know the punishment is, I guess, is that she'd stay there longer. And I'd be like, like, don't you idiots realize that that's not gonna change anything? You know? Uh, if I were Jake, I'd be going off on Father Bryce. I'd, I'd be like, would you just put your religious bullshit aside for two minutes and just be a normal human being? Like, I don't care. You know, I'm not by, I'm not here by choice. You're trying to force all this shit on me. It's not going to do any good. And guess what? They can run away. Now I'm getting a little irritated by that. But, you know, he kind of th threw that line about Sister Catherine and I'm like, what did she do? Why do I get the feeling that she's had an encounter with Chucky? Or know something. And I like how she says, you know, I think your <clears throat> punishment is a bit harsh. And I'm thinking, yeah, you know, if I, if I were her, I, I would have said, you know, if you want to get these kids to come around, punishing them is not the way to do it. Love and acceptance is the way to get them to come around. It, you know, it's like, if you continue to push, yeah, it's, it's not going to work out, but, you know, obviously these guys know what they're doing, but, so my question though is the one that killed Trevor, which one was that? Was it the brainwashed one? Or was it the other one because the other one obviously hasn't been brainwashed and has killed but the way they filmed it it looked like something that the brainwashed one might have seen with all this stuff so we'll see Make it back of their rooms and see him dead. Oh my god. Oh dear. Sweet godmother of Hail Mary Jesus. Fuck! <laughs> So it looks like there's like a souped up Chucky because he says he doesn't miss leg day. Maybe the one that was brainwashed really was brainwashed 
because he did actually look scared when the other Chucky approached him. So it's like, so you have like the souped up Chucky, which is why he was able to do that to Trevor. I swear, it feels like there's more questions and answers. And obviously with five episodes left, we'll, we'll get those answers. But I'm still just kind of like, oh. <laughs> You know, uh, she was doing that inspection, and I'm like, what the hell are you inspecting? Expecting for drugs or what? And I'm like, oh, that's, that place would definitely be hell. I know it's supposed to kind of get you back on the path to God. And I'm like, well, if you want to on the path to God, maybe you should, like, not go so hard. So, it'll be interesting to see. The next episode looks like, yeah, there's like a, um, a party or something that Jennifer Tilly has, and there's going to be a murder there. It was interesting with this episode being completely set at the school. So I wonder if the next one's going to be completely set like at Jennifer Tilly's home since we're seeing her. But after that, of course, then we're halfway through since there's only eight episodes. And obviously these guys know what they're doing in terms of the story and everything. So even if it seems confusing now, hopefully it will all work out. But I wonder why O'Malley was all like, oh God, when he saw Nadine. If maybe she talks too much, if that was it. Or, or what? I mean, obviously we won't know. She might explain it, but obviously we won't know. But I'm thinking that's why she was there. Although she did end up going to confession, so maybe not. But, I'm like, and then she's doing those Hail Marys, and I like how they were f focusing in on, on the rosary. It's like, yeah, that, that's not going to stop you. Yeah, it's not going to work. Anyways, thank you. For joining me for this reaction i hope you enjoyed it if so hit the like button and subscribe for more content i'd love to be able to continue to do these if you're watching this on youtube hit the notification bell to be alerted to future reacts and also head over to my rumble page to watch this to see what has not been trimmed out because obviously if you're watching this on youtube this has been trimmed for YouTube standards. Uh, so if you want to see the complete untrimmed version, please head over there. If somehow you are watching this on Rumble and you are curious as to what has been trimmed out, head over to YouTube and check it out. Follow me on Instagram at LazyCatReactions and if possible, support me on Buy Me a Coffee. I'll see you next time. Bye.